Hey, apparently that's how I start the team calls now. Hey, um, I'm super excited that you guys are taking the time out of your evenings with your, your, fr your friends, your family, your busy schedules. Um, bring in your babies on the calls as a brand new coach. My coach, Emily, just signed up today. I'm super excited for her. Um, to take time out to invest time into your business. You don't hop on these calls for me. You hop on th these calls for yourself to help grow, learn, train, um, and also have be support and commute or have community with your other coaches. So with that said, tonight's team call is new coach success. As you guys know, for those of you that hopped on um, all of last month's team calls, you know that we are starting to do a new coach focus once a month and it's always going to be the last Tuesday of the month for those team calls and it's a great time to get refreshers um, maybe you've been stagnant in your business maybe you just need a swift kick in the ass um, maybe you're a brand new coach so by the way for those of you that are new that's never hopped on a team call before I do get colorful when I get excited with my language so if you have babies in the room earmuffs or you know Emily's baby maybe she won't really understand my colorful language but I mean, if you have toddlers and stuff, just be aware that colorful hair means colorful lingo. Okay, so as a new coach, here's the thing. A lot of coaches come on board, and maybe it's happened to every single one of you, whether you've been a coach for a day or longer, where you come into this business and you're like, okay, shoot, what am I supposed to do? I need to learn everything and anything that I need to know before talking to people about it. Because for one, you don't want to come off as fake, right? Like you want to invite to a challenge group, but have you been a part of a challenge group yourself? Or you want to invite to the coaching community, but what has coaching done for you if only if you've only been a coach for a week, a month, two days, whatever? And the thing is, so many people hold themselves back because they don't feel like they have success yet in order to move forward or to invite other people here. Right. So tonight I'm going to kind of break it down to you. I'm going to simplify things because a lot of times, especially as women, I can't vouch for men, but I'm sure they do this too. But as women, we like to overcomplicate things and we like to overthink things. And that kind of limits us to where we want to be. So I'm going to try to, uh, to veto that out of here, get that out of here. So you guys don't have to focus on that or think that you need to know the ins and outs of everything or to have a thousand dollar paycheck or a hundred pound weight loss in order to share success and to invite. Um, I'm going to kind of run through my, my bullet points quickly because I did post in the team event um, questions for you guys or open it up for questions that you guys had. So I'm going to answer those as well. And I want to have some time for anyone to answer them, not just me taking over. So with that said, as a new coach, and as a seasoned coach, it is very, very, very important that you schedule focused business time, okay? You need to write that down. Every single one of you, if Beachbody is important to you, you have to make time a priority. Just like your workouts, you have to schedule that shit, okay? My, my mornings start off with my miracle mornings. I take care of myself before my son wakes up. A lot of you guys know that have been around for a year or two know that Gage used to wake up at 5.30 in the morning. 5.30 in the morning, my son would be bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. He's like, the, he was, now he's getting grumpy in the morning, so I don't know where he's getting that from, but he used to be like bright-eyed and he'd want to play and he'd want to hang out, 5.30. So that means I had to get my shit together, get my reading in, get my goals and affirmations and gratitude down and my workouts in before my son woke up because I know if I postpone that later on in the, the day, Either that workout was going to get half-assed or it wasn't going to get done at all because there was always going to be something else that came across, right? Like, oh, shoot, I need to cook dinner or laundry or take the dogs out or do the dishes or blah, 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 what, whatever, a, a handful of other excuses or things that could have happened, right? So you always take care of yourself first. And I understand there's going to be some of you that are like, it's impossible for me to wake up early in the morning because I'm already w waking up to be at work at five o'clock in the morning or what have you. You know, everyone's schedule is different, so I'm not saying this is the schedule that you need to stick to, but I had to adjust my time and make time, not find time, but I had to make time for what worked with me so I knew the important things that were going to get done without fail. So I wake up in the morning. Now I wake up 5.30, 6 o'clock. I spend a half an hour on personal development. Then I write my monthly goals as if they already happened because I'm manifesting that bitch, right? Okay. Then I write my gratitude, the things that I'm thankful for, 
It could be the smallest of things. It could be the biggest of things. But I'm practicing gratitude because the more you express gratitude, the more the universe gives you to be grateful for. Then last but not least, I write my words of affirmation. Because oftentimes, we are telling ourselves shit that's been lodged in our subconscious from our childhood, from our environment, from our parents, from relationships, from what have you. And there's things that we repeatedly tell ourselves that are lies. They're bullshit. So I focus on rebuilding my mental love, my inner strength, as we call it. And I write my words of affirmation every single day. I call it my daily love. My daily dose of love, right? Plus words of affirmation, my love language. So that's my vibe. <clears throat> then I work out. All that's done before my son gets out of bed. Luckily, he's waking up at 7.30 now. Yes, I know my schedule is going to be a lot different than yours because I work as a coach full time. Some of you have babies. Some of you guys go to work full time. Some of you guys go to work and school and have babies. I understand. You have to find what time and what schedule works for you, period. Secondly, when you're doing your work, I have, for those of you that like to work um, with other people, we can always do live power hours. We can always, I could share you share with you. I think, Dana, you could chat in the chat box if I'm wrong, but in the big team page, in the doc section, there is my live power hour template that you can use on a Google Drive that could, it just step-by-step -step walks you through um, a, a live power hour when we post. I think that's the leader's page. Okay, I will add it in the big team page. Um, but you could team up with a buddy and work together. I know it's really, here's the thing. With being a beach body coach versus working for the man, there's going to be someone telling you when to do what and what to do, right? We have the flexibility of when we work and how we work. That's good and bad. Because that also means that we don't answer to the man, which means we can procrastinate putting off the things that we need to do. So we need to be diligent about our business and our business hours. We need to understand that Vicky's not going to come to me and say, okay, girl, what'd you do today? Or okay, boy, boy, what'd you do today? I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to sit here and hold your hand and slap you on the wrist every time you don't do a power hour, every time you don't do your workout. You became a beach body coach because of you, not because of me. Yes, maybe I saw belief in you, or maybe your upline saw belief in you, something great, grand, and wonderful, but you became a beach body coach because you wanted to change. You wanted to change your future and your fam for your family, for you. You wanted your present to be better in some way, shape, or form. I can't do the work for you. I can help you. I can mentor you. I can train you. But you have to be diligent and realize that you're not answering to anyone but yourself. You will never fail me, no matter what. You will never fail your upline. You can only fail yourself, and that's only if you quit. Okay? So make sure that you schedule. Stop taking pictures of me. Make sure that you schedule. Dylan, Dylan, our man coach, our second man coach, is also on the team call. He's just not in the picture, by the way, so I'm not talking to myself. So make sure that you guys schedule your work hours, just like you schedule your workout, okay? And if you need some extra accountability or some support, go in the big team page and say, hey, does anyone want to hop on for Life Power Hour? And here's one more thing. If you guys do not have a full chunk hour to designate to your work, maybe you have a half an hour in the morning and a half an hour after the kids go to bed or a half an hour before you go to bed or half an hour while the, the noodles are boiling for dinner or what, whatever. You can break up your chunks in time, but make sure it's focused time. If you live with anyone, make sure they understand what the importance of that means. Because by no means do you want them to get upset with you because you're like this all day. Right? That's why it's focused time. So you can put your phone away. So you can spend time with the people that you love and that you live with. And so they do not bug you or harass you or ask you for milk or cookies or dinner or a foot massage while you're trying to get your shit done. Okay. Okay. Step one. Oh, that was step two. I mean, that was step one. Focus time. Focus schedule time. Step two. You must be doing a program and sharing your journey. Period. 
No if, ands, buts about it. Okay? You cannot be trying to get people to join your challenge group if you're not working on yourself. That is false advertising. You can't say, oh yeah, I, I'm working out, but every day you, you are sharing nothing. You don't, go to, you don't go to the gym, you don't work out, you are sitting there, you know, what do we do when we don't work out? We feel bad about ourselves and it just goes down the, down the spiral. We need to be taking care of ourselves. We start with internally and then we focus on physically, externally. You've got to be doing a program. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're doing clean week, shift shop, lift for a hodgepodge of programs. You have to, well, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but you have to be doing a program. So you're sharing your journey and sharing what works. Beachbody has spent so, so many countless hours creating programs from start to finish with nutrition plans that get people amazing results. And you need to show that it works. You were feeling for Dana. Good job, girl. Um, okay, so how you share. This is going to be great information for those of you that are especially brand new coaches. So you want to make sure you're doing curiosity marketing. Because if all you're doing is, you know, I used to like be the one that would hold up my DVD like, look at what workout I did today was turbo fire. Yeah, way back when cavemen walked the earth and we all played DVDs and turbo fire launch. Um, I would post that or I'd post pictures of me kissing my Shakeology. That was fun too, right? Because everyone wants to sign up with a coach that kisses their Shakeology bottle. I don't know what I was thinking, but I would just put it out there. And what I didn't realize is any Tom, Dick or Harry can Google Shakeology or TurboFire and up comes it on Amazon or Craigslist or eBay and they can order from anywhere. They don't know that you're a coach. They don't, they don't understand what it means to sign up with you and you support and love and encourage them along their journey. So you have to make sure what you're saying is cur it's making them curious. Make them ask questions. Like every morning, for those of you that follow me on my Instagram stories, if not, you probably should because I would be a lot cooler if you did. Um, but for those of you that follow me, you see I always record my workouts. I never say what I'm doing. And every day someone's like, oh, what workout is this? Oh, what, where, where can I find this? Or what, what, is, what is that you're doing? I never will say, oh, I'm doing the four. I say, I'm... I did my last leg day of the program or I'm two weeks in or whatever. I set a time frame, or I say what I did. Oh, chest and back today with my program, but I never share what program I'm doing. Same thing with Shakeology. I call it chocolate goodness, or I say something about like how it's helped my, my hypothyroidism or things like that. You got to make sure that you're making it where other people are curious and they ask questions. Even if it's a post on your Instagram, don't be afraid to ask the questions there because people are going to see that you're, um, you're knowledgeable in what you're talking about and they're going to ask you more questions. Um, make sure that you're sharing your journey, not only on your Instagram stories, but on your main page. There's people that watch more of the Instagram stories than they do your wall. And there's people that only watch your wall and don't look at your Instagram stories. You're going to be hitting two different people. So make sure you're talking about your journey on both platform. I, I mean, it's the same platform, but both ways on your platform. Same thing with Facebook and Facebook stories. Um, make sure that you are engaging in everything. Okay. Take time out of your power hour to engage with the people that like and comment on your stuff. Comment back, use their, like tag their names, comment back so that they know that they're important. Because how many times have you gone to someone's page where you, you admired them or something, or, you know, they were wearing a pretty dress or awesome leggings or whatever, and your comment just got ignored and went down the wayside. You're like, oh, okay, cool. Well, that's, that's awesome. They paid attention. But when you do that to other people, they're like, oh my God, you answered me back or that feels so good. Or thanks for answering my question. Like you make them feel good. And isn't that what you're trying to do to the to your new friends and your families and your followers. You're just trying to make them feel good. You're adding value to them and you're making sure that they know that they're important to you. Point blank. Also, got to make it fun. We all have different ways of being fun, right? Me, I love lip singing and jamming out. Lips, you'll see me dancing wherever I am and lip singing. When, you, when I'm with you in public, chances are you're going to get serenaded to a lip song. Lip song, lip sing, whatever. But that, that's how I'm fun. Someone's 
idea of fun could be something else, playing with the, their kids in the backyard or, you know, tummy time or all these different ways you can make you what you think is fun. You have to think if you were following you on social media, would you want to sign up with you? Here's the last thing. Would you know that you were a coach? I'm not saying that talking about being a coach in every single post, not saying, hey, I'm a beach body coach, want to sign up in my challenge group every single day. But trickling in every day on either a post or a story about coaching. Maybe what you're able to do because of coaching. Maybe you are shouting out a fellow coach or a challenger that has amazing transformation or a small success. Maybe you have just signed up and you're really excited about this opportunity and how many lives it can change and how it can change your life. But you're not talking about Beachbody per se, but you're talking about this coaching or this team or this opportunity. Remember, keep it curiosity marketing. But you also want to make sure that your followers know that you are a coach because I can't tell you how many times the first two years, you guys, the first two years of my business, I didn't say all the time that I was a coach. Like maybe once a month when I did a coaching post or a coaching opportunity post, I would say I was a coach. How many times do people say, you inspired me to go buy TurboFire? You inspired me to go buy Pio. You inspired me to become a coach. And I was like, what? Oh my gosh. Uh, why didn't you sign up with me? What? You're a coach? I guess I was just sharing my journey for the fun of it. I don't know. But people have no idea unless you tell them, unless you let them know. Okay? So make sure you do not make the same mistake that I made, especially for two years. Number three, you got to make new friends, period. Make new friends. Think of your target market though, guys, because another fault that I did, I was trying to reach everybody. I was trying to connect with everybody. Guys, girls, grandmas, grandpas, I thought because I was doing TurboFire, everybody wanted to do TurboFire. If you guys don't know what TurboFire is, it's freaking the bomb.com. It's Shalene Johnson. You get this little spunky spitfire blonde chick jumping up and down and kickboxing. Apparently not everybody wanted to do turbo fire. I didn't know that guys didn't want to do turbo fire, but I'm sitting here like talking to the masses and I wasn't connecting with anyone because here in my mind, I'm just trying to help everybody. I want to help everybody. Why can't I help everybody? Little did I know, it wasn't until I became vulnerable and talked about my struggles and talked about the, the things that really made me me, when I started connecting to people just like me, I found more huggers, more criers, more people that love lip singing and dancing in their workout videos. Hello! Imagine that when you start being you and talking to you on social media, the people you can attract. And that's where the true connection lies. When you talk about who you are and be true to who you're, you are, talk about your struggles and be raw and vulnerable and not surfaceal, that's where people connect with you and they're like, oh my, bless you. That's why they connect with you and they want to be like, okay, well, if I can watch he or she do this and they've struggled with this or they still struggle with this or they got through this, I can do it too. So don't forget to be picky on who you're, you're posting to and you're talking to, okay? Because I guarantee you, I don't care how exciting it is to go emerald or how exciting it is to go diamond. Yeah, those bonuses are freaking awesome. But if you build just random people, you are going to regret it. I promise you that. You've got to be intentional about making friends. That has to be purposeful because for one, you never want to expand your war market and your war market is the people that you already know. You want to continue to make new friends. You know, think back when you were in third grade, you would go to the playground, you'd play on the merry-go-round and the swings. You'd walk away from that playground with like five new besties, right? Well, let me tell you, social media is the same exact way but you have to put yourself out there. I know it's scary. I know we're afraid of rejection and we're afraid of looking like a salesman and we're afraid of all this, 
do not let fear guide you anymore because all fear does is hold you back. My dog. And there's my other dog. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Use integrity. If you know in your heart of hearts what you are doing in this business, you won't have fear holding you back. You will know without a doubt that you want your life to become better. Maybe financially, physically, emotionally, with support, community, what have you. And you know without a doubt that you want to offer that to other people too. No matter what it is. Maybe just adding value in their lives. Maybe just adding motivation, inspiration. Getting them to put down the bonbons and shut off the biggest loser and maybe go for a run. You want to add value to their lives to make it better. So when you're, when you're staying with your integrity, there's no way you're going to be like, okay, well, so-and-so doesn't want to be my friend or so-and-so is going to regret messaging me because they're going to think I'm a salesman. Well, you're not going to make new friends because you want to sell them a challenge pack or so they could become a coach with you, right? You're doing it because you want to make new friends. You want to add value to their lives. Last but not least in the make new friends column, don't take shit personal. You are going to be told no. You're going to have people sign up with other people. You know what? That's fine. You can't take it personal. It has nothing to do with you and everything to do with that person. Maybe that no means they're not ready. Because how many of you signed up as a coach or a challenger the first time you were asked? I want to know. How many of you? Anybody? Besides you. Oh, we got a few. Okay, okay. But look at that. How many people are on this call and how many said yes the first time? Chances are, see, chances are you're going to follow up or you're going to remain their friend until they're ready. I've been talking to my girl, Emily, forever, right? She's been wanting to join a challenge group forever. She's so freaking excited that she gets to finally, she's doing shift shop, right? She's a coach now. But she didn't sign up the first time we talked about it. But when, when she didn't sign up, did I was like, I don't want to be friends with you, Emily. <laughs> you hurt my feelings. I'm taking it personal. No. Whether it's a friend, a family member, your freaking mom, I don't care who it is. You cannot take it personal, you guys. Because it, it, if it's not their time, it's not their time. If they sign up with someone else, that means that only means they related to someone else better. And that's fine. Because that's what you want, right? You can't take it personal. Number four, focus on relationship growth. You cannot just send a plethora of Facebook friend requests and call it good. You have to focus on the growth in that relationship, in that conversation. Sorry, I have to shut off my, I thought my, my volume, oh my gosh. And then it's hooked up to my, my computer. Anyways, you have to focus on building that relationship. And you always want to act as if. As if they want to be your friend. Act as if they need you in your life. Because when you think that, you're going to go into it with a positive headspace. Because how many of us message some person, whether they're following us or we friend request them or whatever, and we get the jitters like, I'm starting to doubt myself. Oh my gosh, what are they going to think of me? And oh my gosh, uh, maybe I said the wrong thing. Ugh, whatever, get that person out of your head. This is why personal development is important. So if you're not reading personal development, get some. Yeah. Also, follow up. Like I just asked everybody, who on here was the first, or signed up the first time you were asked? What? Two out of 15, okay? I mean, yes, that's still good odds. So go out, ask 15 people tonight. Two people will say yes. There you go. But follow up. Remember, these people are now your friends. They're in your life. I'm not saying, hey, girl, are you ready to do 21 Day Fix yet? Hey, are you ready to do shift shop yet? Shift shop yet? I'm saying follow up, get to know them. What is their life like? Check in on their kids. Maybe they just took a vacation. Say, how are you doing? Check in with them, follow up. Let them know that they're important to you. Remember, we keep talking about them and their importance in their lives and adding value to them. My son's calling me. I don't know what he wants. Probably wants me to change the channel. You're important, but you know. All right. 
reaching out, inviting. Now I'm going to be honest, and this is going to help a lot of you, but it may get a little confusing for you newbies. So bear with me. Inviting is usually, <clears throat> it's the majority of people's frog. And what I mean by that is it's usually the thing that people as coaches don't do the most, which is funny because inviting is the only activity that could constantly build your business the most. But most coaches don't do it because they're scared of rejection. They're scared of looking bad. They're, they take shit personal. But the truth of the matter is this company coaches saves lives. It really does. It changes people's lives. It gives them the opportunity of freedom in so many different ways. And what you are doing by inviting someone is all you're doing is giving them an open door, presenting an opportunity to them so their life can change. But if you don't do that, if you are too scared and you hold yourself back from inviting, from putting this opportunity, whether it's coaching or challenge groups or a free clean eating group or whatever in front of people, look at what you're holding back from them. I'm sorry to tell you guys this, but it's your responsibility as a beach body coach to put this opportunity in front of as many people as you can so we can change lives together. So we can save lives together. Like, I'm not even kidding you. I have so many amazing women and men now on this team, but I'm sitting there watching like their Instagram stories and their Instagram pages. And I see their confidence. Like I, it's to me, it's not about the paychecks. Yes. I understand financial stress and the income growth is amazing, but I'm watching the confidence and the glow and, and these selfies, like just progress over the days. And there's nothing more exciting, especially coming from a girl who struggled with self-worth and self-love for so long, being able to see that in photos, in fucking photos. Sorry, I'm getting really colorful there. But even in my own transformation, and it's really hard for those of you who, who haven't made any sort of pro progression, you look at your own photos and you're like, oh, I don't see a difference or, you know, that doesn't blah, blah, blah. But then you put like an old photo together next to a new photo. Like I did a transformation picture today of one where I started the day before I started 80 day obsession, it was the beginning of January. And I was like, I look fucking miserable. I look miserable. Yes, I was in misery, but I thought I was doing a good job hiding it. But then I look at that photo and I was like, hot damn girlfriend, you were a hot mess. And then I look at myself now and I'm like, yes, yes. Like, doesn't that feel good? Why are we holding that back from other people? That's not fair. All that is, it's selfish because we're scared and we're letting fear hold us back. So we need to stop doing that. We need to push that fear aside. If you guys need help getting over fear, I have a plethora of book suggestions that I could throw your way. Don't hesitate to ask. Hey, those are my, oh wait, I have one more. I have one more point. Um, <clears throat> Yes, Manny, and don't let your family judge you and discourage you. Not everyone is going to support your decisions. It's not their life, it's yours. Absolutely. freaking -lutely. Absolutely. The people that you think are going to be your biggest supporters may not be, and that is okay. That is absolutely okay. And Sabrina, I will give you all the, all the book suggestions. Actually, you guys know what? There is a document in the big team page of personal development books. I will bump it up after this call. <clears throat> Last but not least, I want you... I'll try this down. Do not slow down. Do not slow down. Momentum is the hardest thing to get back. As any of you guys know who's done any program or workout ever, Monday through Friday, you're nailing it. Your nutrition is on point. Come Friday, you, you hit a happy hour. Oh, Saturday, I hit happy hour last night. Well, I, I'm going to skip my workout today. Sunday comes, yeah, I'm going to skip my half or my workout today and then I'm going to do brunch and then I'm going to do mimosas or wh wh whatever your guilty pleasure is. Come Monday, you're like, oh, I got to work out again and you just feel like you're on the struggle bus, right? So why do we lose momentum? I mean, it happens to everybody, whether it's your business or your own journey. Do not slow down. Whatever you can give on a daily basis, give that. Give your best. If you can give a half an hour in your business today and an hour tomorrow, 
Awesome. That's great. But give your best while you can. Okay. Now I'm going to go answer some questions. So bear with me and then I'll open it up. Okay. So I hope you guys don't mind me um, saying who said these. Um, Kaylee said, I've been inviting it constantly, but cannot get people to commit. It makes me very frustrated. I know that they are just pebbles in my pile, or I know they are just pebbles in my pile, and that follow up is where the magic is at. But I'm feeling, but I feel like I'm not effectively inviting. Sabrina agreed, and Terry also agreed. Okay, so here's the thing I'm going to tell you guys point blank. You can say all the wrong thing or all the right things to the wrong people, nothing will ever happen. You can say all the right thing or all the wrong things to the right people and magic happens. It doesn't matter how you invite. It doesn't matter if you think you're inviting sucks or you're, you're missing a mark somewhere or you, you vomit off the mouth because what happens? We get really excited and we're like, Oh my God, sign up. Oh, let me tell you all this stuff. Right? The thing is, if you're talking to the right people, they'll say yes. But I'm telling you, if at that time you, you have a hard time closing, it's because they're not ready. But I'm going to give you all a little hint when it comes to closing. When I'm talking to someone about a challenge group, I break down every single package. I give them the option, yeah, if you're a caveman and you still want to hang out with DVDs, you can get this fitness program for $59.85. Or you can get the challenge pack, which comes with... 30 days of Shakeology, which is also 30 meals you don't have to plan or budget for. Yes, I include that for $160. Or you can get this, the performance line. Or you can get the all access pass, which I think is the best bang for your buck because you get a year's worth of Beachbody On Demand where you can stream the entire library of workout programs plus new programs that are launched that are automatically on there and your first 30 days of Shakeology. I break it all down. And then if they want to do the three-day refresh, I add the Kickstart package in there. But I show each value in every single package. And before I send them that, I say I can break down the packages for you so you can see which one fits best with your needs and goals. I let them know, I reassure, or I remind them that we're talking about their needs and their goals before the price comes out. Because I guarantee it, that no matter what price you give them, they're going to say it's too expensive. Because how many of you wanted to start your journey way long ago, but price kept you back? Oh, but I bet you, I bet you, you had money to come up with a new pair of shoes or a concert ticket or going out to the bar. I bet you had money for that, right? So does everybody else. But when we're talking about health, that's an investment in yourself. And people get scared because they're like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if it will work for me. I don't know if I can commit. I don't know if I, I can stick to it. You also have to reassure them that whatever package they choose, I, I always end it with, plus me, your wellness bestie for life. That means I could harass you. You're welcome. But they love that. They're like, oh my gosh, what does that mean? Support from you. I could ask you questions. Yeah, you can. Even if they're crazy, I could send you my selfies. Yes, absolutely. We can get on Marco. We could FaceTime, whatever you want to do. Because you know what? Being a coach is priceless. There's no amount that someone could put on someone to help them along their journey. You are someone's someone. But you don't get charged. You don't get paid hourly for coaching. That comes with any package. But people don't see that unless you remind them. Fine, you can go on your journey by yourself. We all know how that works out. I've been there multiple times. Hence why I was so big for so long. Because I tried it by myself. It didn't work. So you have to break down every single package and remind them that they get you too. Because that's, Shakeology is great. The performance line is great. The support is huge. The support, meaning you as the coach, is huge, right? Okay. I hope that answered your question. Um, Deborah said, my biggest struggle is when I'm ready to invite someone or share, I back out because of fear of what they think of me. It is my biggest struggle right now. I've been working on it, but it's still a biggest struggle of what people think of me. 
Well, that also goes along the same lines of why do we care what people think? So many of us hold ourselves back from pursuing a new career or asking someone out or dyeing our hair a certain color, getting a tattoo, doing anything that's life changing because of what people will think of them. So many people hold themselves back because of that thought. The best way that you can get over that is let it go. Write in your affirmations, I do not give a flying, whatever fancy color that you wanna write in there about what people think of me. I am amazing just as I am. I have so much to offer other people. There's so many different words of affirmation that you can include. There's also a lot of personal development that can help you. I struggle with how to talk to people after I invite them to a challenge group. Hope, she's on here. Honestly, be humble. What has challenge groups done for you? What has a program done for you? Are you super excited about it? Does, it? does it make you feel good? Did you gain confidence? Did you lose weight? Did you get stronger? Or are you just starting out and those are the things you're excited about? Like I always say, and I know a lot of you guys have heard me say this before, I always say inviting to a challenge group is just like buying a new pair of boots. You go to Target, they're 40% off, they're super comfy, you can wear them with leggings and jeans and your jean skirt and la la da da da. You go out with your friends, someone's like, oh my God, those are super cute boots. Oh, thanks, I got them at Target, they were 40% off, I could wear them with this, 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 and this. You're super excited about your boots, but are you trying to sell your girlfriends your boots off your feet? No, you're just super excited about them that you can't help but talk about it. The same thing with challenge groups. You joined a challenge group because of why? Because you wanted more confidence. You wanted to feel better. You wanted to reach your goals. You wanted to get healthy. You want to drop your bad habits. How are those not amazing, exciting things that you'd want to share with other people? I hope that helps. Iris, this one is random, but the planner. I always run out of computer ink printing the pages and then put it in, together in a binder. How can I make this process easier and more, more effective? I remember seeing something saying I could purchase one already. So Iris, I will send you the link or we could bump up the link of where you can actually order the planner online. Um, I actually believe it's on the Misfit, she was on here, but she'll watch the recording, but it's on the misfitrepublic.com um, website too, where there's a link that you can actually order the planner. Um, Vanessa, finding new people on social media, where do you find them? Um, my jam is Instagram. I like to search hashtags. Vanessa, this is your question. Um, she's probably around with her babies. But my, my favorite platform to use is Instagram. I look for hashtags of things that make me me, of things that I relate to my target market, my target audience. Um, so I search anything that has, has to do with being a boy mom or um, dogs certain types of dogs, um, autoimmune disease, things that I like, lip singing, you know, favorite bands, things like that. Um, and then you, I, I always feel like you have an automatic connection with them if you're searching up a hashtag that is a part of your life. So it's not just sending a random friend request like, hey, thanks for accepting my friend request. We're friends now, woo. Like to me, that's weird. But on Instagram, I'm like, oh my God, you have a Boston Terrier too? How old? Oh my God, mine just got attacked by a pit bull. Oh, no, no. You don't know, like, I can relate to someone right away because of a hashtag. And that's why that's my jam. Um, other people like to use Facebook and they're a part of a lot of groups. In groups, don't go randomly friend requesting people, but add value in those groups. Maybe you're a hike, part of the hiking community. Tell people what the best hiking shoes are or the best place to go hiking with kids or things like that. If you're a part of groups, utilize um, them by adding value in the groups. Um, Kaylee also gave Vanessa some good suggestions about Instagram. Yes, Instagram is the jam. I also struggle with information vomit. I think I overwhelm people with way too much information off the bat. Iris, this is a lot of people's downfall because like I said, we vomit out the mouth because we get so excited talking about something. My, my best advice for this, guys, is make them talk more. Ask questions. Be interested, not interesting. Okay? So if they say, hey, how much for that, that program you're doing? Oh, I would love to chat you about, with you about details, but can I ask you what made you interested? 
oh yeah, I see that you've been working on it. I've been thinking about doing it. Oh, are you working towards a specific goal? Always ask them a question. Come back. Have you, what have you been doing to reach your goal? Where do you struggle? Have, have you been on your journey by yourself or do you have support? Then after you get them talking about their goals and their struggles and what they have been doing and what they, all these things, then you can kind of give them the vomit off the mouth, right? Then you can be like, oh girl, I'm so excited to tell you that I've been doing this and blah, blah, blah. That's when you can do it. Um, if you're not comfortable talking about a product or a program, spend some time researching that stuff in the online office or YouTube. There's so much free information out there at your own convenience, guys, that there's no reason for you not to not feel comfortable about Shakeology or the performance line or, or different programs because it's all there for you that you could literally go and sit in the line to pick up your kid from school or even on the pooper in the morning and sit and scroll and do some research for five minutes. I'm telling you. You can get a lot done. Um, Sheila, I struggle with figuring out to post without sounding like a salesperson. Talking about the cost and personal messages too and how personal my post should be. Also, I refrain from posting because I think the post doesn't really have a message or meaning behind it. Also, I would like to post videos of me working out like Vicky on her IG stories, but the video qualities I record are not the best quality. I try to buy a tripod, but can never get a good angle. <laughs> okay, so my dear. Um, I record my videos off of Instagram stories. I know like my boyfriend, Dylan, he will record his on his, um, iPhone X, which has like the best camera ever. And then he will drop, like shorten it down to where he will upload it on his Instagram stories. Me, I don't have time for that business. Um, so I just record it directly from Instagram stories. I don't really care about the quality because it's going on my Instagram stories. It's going to be gone in 24 hours. Um, <clears throat> and plus I have way more, I, I need to spend way more time focused on building messages. But the thing is with being personal, just be humble and be vulnerable and be who you really are. Talk about the things that you've struggled with. Talk about the things that you wish you knew before starting your journey. Talk about the things that um, you, you think would help people just like you along their journey, or maybe they haven't started yet or, you know, like, when you could post selfies and post a motivational quote, you can talk about, you know, being proud of yourself because you bumped your weights up two pounds. You can talk about being able to do a push up finally on your toes. There's so many different ways that you can share your story and add value without feeling like it's not enough and never feel like it's not enough. Just be true to who you are and, and make sure that you feel like like if you went to your page, if you weren't you, if you went to your page, would you get something from that? That's what you got to think at the end of the day, go to your page and be like, okay, what did I get from the things that I posted today? Would it help me five years ago? Would it help me five months ago? Those were all the questions. I hope I answered all your questions. Does anyone want to unmute and ask a question? Say a comment, concern, give any feedback? No, y'all are quiet. So I got to tell you guys something real quick. My girl Kaylee, I know I picked on her last time too. She's like, I'm never going to be on a team call again. I'm out of here. Okay. So for those of you that are my PS coaches and customers, I have my VIP group and I think it's one of the days is non, oh, Sunday, non-scale victory Sunday. So I'm sitting here talking to you guys about how I'm watching my girls, their Instagram stories and their progression and stuff. And I kept looking at Kaylee. So the other day, so under the post, it says non-scale, what's your non-scale victory? And Kaylee was like, my jawline. Like, okay, if you guys go to her page on Instagram or Facebook, you can see her crazy ass progression. Like she was exactly who I was thinking of when I'm sitting here telling the story. She started in May. She started with 2B Mindset. And I'm not even, I kid you not, you guys, her progression was enormous. And it was like, yes, she's had like almost a 40 pound loss, which is freaking phenomenal. But her confidence and all her selfies and like her glow and everything, it's just like, this is why I do what I do. This is why we do what we do. You know, yes, you get paid for doing what you do. Yes, you're able to supplement your income and stay at home with your kids or be able to travel and go to awesome locations and all that stuff. Yes, that's all fabulous. But helping people feel good in their bodies, helping people have that confidence and, and 
be true to who they are and and love life again and and feel free in every aspect of life. That's why we do what we do. I don't know why I started talking about Kaylee. I had to bring that that up. Um, apparently, it, it's every every team call I have to pick on you, but I just want you guys to know, like, when you hold yourself back, when you overthink things, when you overcomplicate things, when you push off working your business, think of all the people that you're unable to help because of that. And look, look in our team pages, look in the, in the big misfit community, look at the beach body community and all the lives that have been changed. Like for those of you that have ever gone to summit or you do go to summit, please go to summit or at least stream it. If you absolutely cannot make it because every time you're supposed to dress up in fancy dresses and fancy tuxes and all this stuff and makeup and blah, blah, blah. I shit you not. I always forget to wear waterproof mask. Hold on waterproof mascara and I need it because I'm always crying because they're always talking about like how someone overcame cancer or diabetes or you know they couldn't run around with their grandchildren and then Beachbody was introduced to them and then they were able to run you know like these stories where they hit home and you're just like god this company is really freaking amazing and so many people don't take advantage of that because they get in their own way and they hold themselves back or they put Beachbody on the back burner because something else comes up when Beachbody is the same thing, that can help change their life. So I want you guys to know, remember that. Re Did you just fart, Gage? Oh, oh, sorry, 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 guys. Uh, don't forget that. And don't let fear hold you back anymore. Just let that go and think about the simple things that you need to do every single day. And I'm not saying every day, Monday through Friday. That's all I ask. Have the weekends off with your family, your friends. Do the things that you love to do. Friends, foe. Friends, foe, whatever. Game, peanut gallery, over here. So, you guys ready for a selfie? No. Do you want to come take a selfie, Gagey? Yeah, by the way, um, I'm now changing my whole thing because it's not charged and then charged up. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks for watching the recording.